This instructional video is designed to demonstrate the use of the method of initial rates to determine the form of the rate law for a reaction. When you're given initial rate data as well as data for the initial concentrations of the reactants. In this case we've suppressed the units in order to ease writing and clarity of the mechanical steps as well as used a generic reaction to show just the pure process. So the rate law states that the rate of a reaction is equal to the rate constant times the concentrations of your individual components where those components have an exponent that's equal to its order. So we'll use an M for the first one and a P for the second one. And so our job then is to use the given data to determine values for M and P. So we'll start off by uh, comparing number one versus number two. And so data set one and data set two shows that component B does not change in concentration and so any change in the rate has to be the result of a change in the concentration of component A. That information then will allow us to determine a value for M. Once we have that information we can make a second comparison of number one versus number three and because we know the effect of this change when we observe this change we'll be able to determine what that does to the rate and so that information will allow us to solve for P so we start out by taking one versus two and we want to look at what the rate is for one in its relationship to the rate for number two. And what we find is that rate one is going to be equal to two times rate number two. And so once we have that equality, we can actually substitute in the expression for rate two. So it's going to be the equilibrium constant times the concentration of A, which is 0.8 raised to the M, and 0.1 raised to the P. So now we want to write in the same thing for rate 1 where we have the rate constant times 0.4 to the M and 0.1 to the P. So now that we've written out this equality we can actually start eliminating things. Our rate constants will be the first to go and then our concentration of B can also be eliminated. Now, we want to solve for M, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.8 raised to the M. And this allows me to cancel out the term here. So now what I'm left with is 2 on the right hand side. And on the left hand side I have 0.4 over 0.8 all raised to the m power. Well, 0.4 divided by 0.8 is just one half. So I have one half to the m equals 2. And the only way this works is if m has the value negative 1. So I have now determined the first part and all I have left to do is determine a value for P to get the order of the reaction for component B. So we do the same thing. We're comparing 1 versus 3. So I want to look at rate 1 versus rate 3. And comparing 200 to 40, if I multiply by 5, that allows me to have an equality. So I'm going to erase out rate 3 and replace it with actual numerical data. So we have rate constant. We're going to have the concentration of A, which is 2.0 to the negative 1, and concentration of B, 0.5 to the P. So we make the same substitution for rate 1. We have the rate constant 
the concentration of A for trial 1.4 raised to the negative 1 and the concentration of B which is 0.1 raised to the P and so now the cancellation we will be able to get rid of K our rate constant on both sides but now we've got a much bigger problem in that we don't have the clean cancellations we've seen before. However, we do know that we want all of our numbers on one side, so I will divide by 0.4 to the negative 1. And to get P on the left hand side by itself, I'll divide by 0.5 to the P. And so this results in a uh, cancellation here and a cancellation here. And what we're now left with is 0.1 over 0.5 raised to the P. That equals 5 times 2.0 divided by 0.4 all raised to the negative 1. So in this case we have to do a little bit of math. Uh, 0.1 over 0.5 it's just one fifth, so one over five to the p equals five times two point zero divided by point four is going to give me five, and five times five to the negative one gives me one. So one over five raised to the p power equals one. This means that p has to equal zero because anything raised to the zero power will give me one. So I now have all of the information I need to write out the complete rate law expression. And so we have that the rate of reaction will be equal to the rate constant times component A raised to the negative one and component B raised to the zero. If we want to step through the math and simplify that, then we can acknowledge that raising anything to the zero power just makes it one. And so a to the negative one, we can place that in the denominator. And so either of these is correct. The second one is just a simplified version. And this is all found using the method of initial rates.